everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about EDC medical stuff. And today I have the uh, big tuna himself, Phil Groff, to go over some of the uh, items that you guys should think about carrying on a daily basis that apply to medical needs in a dynamic incident. Phil, go ahead. What we got? Yeah, so we're taking a look at our EDC med needs and some of the things that we look at. And a lot of times we'll focus on our big trauma kits that we put on a, a belt or on our vests or things like that. But we're seeing more and more now as incidents, incidents happen across the country, we have terror attacks, we have active shooter threats. The ability to have appropriate medical supplies immediately on hand. You know, I, I always run on a theory that if it isn't on you, it doesn't exist. So having a, a great kit stocked up in your car does nothing for you if you're on foot. So we got to take a look at some of these EDC medical items. Obviously, it's going to be, it's going to scale our capabilities to the size and how much we want to carry, or else we'll run around with Jack Bauer man purses. So we're going to take a look at some some good items that I that I use my personal EDC medical equipment and some other things that you can put together for your own kit to have something because something is better than nothing. And again, if it's not on you, if you're not carrying it, don't consider that it even exists. All right, guys, we're going to bring the camera in for a closer look, and uh, we're going to go over these items individually. All right, Phil, walk us through some of these items you have here on the table. Okay, so what I have starting off here, this is a, a full-size med kit. So obviously this isn't something that you're going to carry and, and put inside your pocket and, and tote around. And yeah, it's got great gear in it and you got all kinds of room for storage and, and different things, but not realistic, not something we're going to be carrying. One of my, my kits, I, I kind of have that over here to the side. I've got a couple examples of tourniquets here. This is an old military tourniquet, um, not real compact. It's, it's also not a really, really effective tourniquet. There's no wine list, it doesn't do the job, and they were replaced. We have a, a soft tee here, great tourniquet, and this is the exact same tourniquet that's in my EDC kit. This is just non-vacuum pack. You can use this tourniquet, very simple to use, very effective device. Uh, you can use this particular tourniquet in your EDC. This would slip in a pocket. They do make ankle holsters for these. Uh, you can curl this up and, and Figure out a way to carry this comfortably in just about, you know, not much larger of a footprint. And when you get a pack that's that's vac down, vac sealed down, like the one from ITS that I carry, you can actually shrink this tourniquet down to a very, very manageable size, about the size of a thick wallet. So you got your baller cash in your wallet, about the same as a tourniquet. Probably number one piece of kit you should have on you as an EDC medical of some form of tourniquet. This is a great option. There's all kinds of other ones. My primary non-EDC tourniquets I carry are going to typically be ratchet tourniquets. Uh, they, unlike the soft tees or some of the other ones, uh, they are not good for EDC because they're simply too large of a footprint. Great force and, and easy to apply and you can crank enough force by yourself if you're using it in a self-aid capacity, but really not small enough. There's all kinds of tourniquet products out there on the market. Another option that's very popular with EDC are the SWAT T tourniquets. Essentially a large rubber band, really wide rubber band. My experience with these, and, and I carry them for years as a cop, and, and using them is they're a pretty good pressure dressing or to add pressure to a, a trauma dressing that you place. They're really pretty terrible as tourni tourniquets. On lower extremities, they're hard to get enough force. In self-application, they're very difficult to get enough force uh, to truly stop a heavy bleed. But they do come in a very, very tight, compact package. You can slip this into a front pocket, back pocket, cargo pocket. You can even slip it in your shirt pocket. They're so small. So this is better than nothing, but not quite as good as a conventional tourniquet. So a lot of times, and, and there, are all, there are other tourniquet pro products out in the market now. Um, the rat tourniquet is, is a common one that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. Another form of a rubber band style tourniquet with a, uh, essentially a buckle that allows you to increase the pressure. That would be a pretty sizable upgrade from the SWAT T, but still not quite as good as the full-blown uh, windless style tourniquet. So a lot of times what people do is they'll look for some different uh, shortcuts and one of the most popular ones that I see guys talk about is zip ties and utilizing zip ties and thinking you can use those as a tourniquet. Uh, they're too narrow, they're not nearly strong enough, you won't be able to put enough pressure on them so I don't recommend carrying a, a large zip tie like this and thinking that's part of your your EDC kit for medical. I tell you, they are great for though, is they are outstanding option to carry threaded through your belt, behind your belt. They're an outstanding option to carry to have a quick temporary restraint. 
They're not handcuffs. They're not nearly as secure. And if you've watched any videos online, you know you can break these pretty easily if you understand the skills how to do it. But they are something. They're great for zipping doors together. Uh, there's a, a million and one uses for these things. But medical, probably not one of them. Leave that on the leave that out. One last thing I do want to show, and a lot of folks carry this. It's a small roll of, of Gorilla Tape. These are some nitrile gloves. Something as small as this package could really help you out in EDC. It gives you some personal protection. And a small little square of tape like this is great, not only for all kinds of emergencies that come up, but you can also use it in some medical capacity. It can increase pressure on, on a dressing. You can use it as the dressing itself if need be. You're just not going to be able to get any kind of a tourniquet action out of a, a small roll of, of Gorilla Tape like that. So just another item to keep in mind. So now onto what I carry. I carry a commercially produced EDC med kit. Uh, it's ITS Tacticals EDC medical kit. And it contains some quick clot gauze, a soft tee tourniquet, and a pair of nitrile gloves. That's everything. Like, like we're, we're going to mention, and like I said before, the tourniquet is the most important part and what you've got to have. So this gives me a good commercial tourniquet with a windlass. Gives me some quick clot combat gauze, which now enhances my ability to stop a very extreme hemorrhage, and some PPE in the nitrile gloves. Nice compact package. It sets up about, about the width and dimensions of a wallet. So in comparison to my wallet, if you can see the width and the general size. Not much larger or wider than your average wallet. So carrying one of these just lets me have some great high quality medical equipment on hand and I will tell you an experience uh, you know an old cop trick I used to use I used to carry two wallets carried my badge and my ID in one wallet and then all my personal effects and, and money in the other wallet and that balance it's it's amazing what a little bit you know you talk to your your doctor your chiropractor and you have some balance in how you carry we've talked before about carrying spare magazines on the off side of the gun to help balance out the weight and to distribute the weight a little bit more evenly Items inside your pocket are just the exact same way. So if you're carrying a med kit, I no longer carry two wallets, but now I carry this med kit in my opposite back pocket, opposite of my wallet, and it helps balance it out and makes for a little bit more comfortable carry position and, and gives me great supplies. So ITS, EDC med kit. Um, Phil, real quickly, you touched on quick clot a little bit. Uh, there's a little bit of controversy out there. Is that overrated? Is it underrated? Is quick clot pretty important? Because I know those guys out there are going to ask about it. Yeah, so any of your hemostatic agents are, you know, they've gotten a lot better when they first kind of reintroduced them. It's not a new concept. It's been around for a long, long time to have a, a clotting agent of some kind. The the quick clot and the combat gauze is probably the one of the best variations of that. It's a, a great product that works really, really well when used properly and when used for the right kind of injuries. It allows you better hemorrhage control in areas that cannot be dealt with via a tourniquet. So some of your your intersection areas, your hips, shoulders, uh, some of your thoracic injuries that, that have no ability to have any hemostatic control or any, any bleeding control uh, applied by a tourniquet, any of your hemostatic agents, quick clot, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of them out there. Any of those would, would do a better job than just regular gauze. Hmm. But it's proper technique, it's, it's proper equipment, coupled by proper technique. Packing a wound correctly, um, far too many people don't pack it tight enough or, or use enough product. The hemostatic agent inside quick clot just aids in that, but if all you have is regular gauze, technique is really more important, I think, than, than the actual agent itself. All right, guys, so that was a close look at some of the items here on the table. Phil, if you had to prioritize stuff, what would be the most important to carry on your person? Yeah, so carrying enhanced medical supplies or things to do the job, tools to do the job correctly. Uh, you know, you'll notice that we didn't go real in-depth or, or talk a lot about any specific bandages or, or things of that nature or a lot of gauze. Now, I do have in my EDC, I do have the the quick clot combat gauze uh, it's a great little package but we don't talk a lot about the bandaging side of it trauma dressing bandaging things like that the reason being is there's a lot of items around us in our day-to-day -day lives including our clothing that can be substituted in a pinch so it's it's also items that are pretty large by their very nature now yeah is is quick clot combat gauze compared to a, a t-shirt hands down the quick clot's going to do the job 
a thousand percent better and it's also going to be cleaner and more sterile. But we can use what we have on our, our bodies or in our environments as a bandage. And the same can be said of tourniquets, but I can tell you that the better you, you purchase in a tourniquet and the higher quality, the better materials that a tourniquet's made out of, the more effective it is in use. It's not always going to be that you can find, you know, the old Boy Scout handkerchief and a stick lying around. That may not work out for you. And I will tell you, those are very difficult to maintain and also transport a victim sure. with anything like that. you got to have a good, high-quality tourniquet. Some of the tourniquets that we showed and we talked about this, they don't do the job quite as well as what they're advertised. And there's a whole lot of different variety of, of quote-unquote tourniquets out there. But I can tell you, it takes a hell of a lot of force to really stop, uh, you know, really stop that bleed, particularly on your lower extremities. It's a lot of force. There's, there's, a, there's a reason that they switch to metal windlasses in a lot of these or their ratchet systems. It takes a ton of pressure. And, you know, rubber bands and, and different things, they can work in a pinch, but they're not as good as the real thing. So we can carry the real thing, we're going to do that. So a tourniquet and a good tourniquet is a really, really high priority. Outside of that, there's all kinds of gear you can carry. And in our med kits, you know, we're carrying stuff to treat all different types of, of injuries, to treat things and conditions that occur after that. You know, we, we carry uh, decompression needles for tension pneumothorax and lots of different things that we may not necessarily carry in an EDC environment just because we simply don't have the room. And the most important priority to get us to advanced care is to stop that bleed. Another thing, I don't have any here, but another great option for this would be some airway management. So a nasal far pharyngeal airway is something that you can carry really, really simply. It just helps maintain that airway a little bit. If you have a really, really high level trauma though, that, that uh, nasal pharyngeal doesn't do as much for you as, as other types of, of airway management systems. So I omit it from my kit because it's something that's, to me, it, it's more of an advanced level. Um, and for what the, the nasal pharyngeal does for you, it's, it's not enough bang for the buck. So there's all kinds of different options and, and you can be creative, but that tourniquet's the hardest thing to improvise. So probably the most important piece that, that you're gonna find and carry on a day-to-day -day basis. Excellent. All right, guys, that's a pretty detailed look of what you guys should be thinking about medical-wise for your everyday carry. You know, it's unfortunate with the turn of events that we've had in this country and across the globe that this stuff is becoming um, towards the forefront of our minds. And uh, it's not something you should take lightly. Everyone loves carrying a gun. Everyone loves being, you know, a cowboy. But like Phil said, this is probably going to be the biggest opportunity to save lives is on the medical medical uh, arena. What do you think, Phil? Yeah, I mean, it's it's good that we, we talk about it, you know, and it's, it's in everyone's mind right now on terror and active shooters, but here's the reality of what you're carrying. You're carrying this for any emergency that comes up. So car accidents, we're all on the road all the time, and some of the most serious accidents that, that I've seen in person have been a result of, of very, very you know, high impact car accidents, car collisions, you know, you can use this stuff on that. You can use it on, you know, industrial accidents, all kinds of different things. You should never ever base your medical kit around just thinking that you're treating one kind of injury. There's all kinds of trauma. So to have these life-saving supplies on you might make the difference for yourself, a loved one, or being able to save a life of someone else in the street. Yep. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that like button. Share this video with your friends and family. Go visit us on Facebook and Instagram, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.